We're on. Huh. I think. Wow. <laughs> it's been a minute since we did a live show. Uh, apologize for any mistakes that are made ahead of time. Hopefully everything pans out okay. Uh, Try to give everybody a few minutes to get on. Actually, that's a lie. I was just trying to figure out what the hell I was doing. Uh, I'm still not sure I know what I'm doing. So, I uh, hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, we're going to dive into the headlines. we got quite a few today, Joe. Uh, did you ever have one of those epic haircuts back in the 80s known as the mullet? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great hairstyle. <laughs> what was it? Uh, business in the front, party, party in the back. In the back right? yeah. So the uh, last guy that was known by, he was a movie character. Remember Joe Dirt? I don't know if you ever saw that movie with David Spade. Yes. Uh, he had the mullet. And it was quite a, quite, quite a comical movie, but... Uh, Poor, uh, poor Ozzy Teen was devastated, Joe, after he's being refused entry into his favorite pub on his 18th birthday because he had a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> so bad fashion you showed him a shit. And nobody will let me in. So when you turn 18, the first thing you want to do is either legally buy alcohol from a bottle shop or head to your pub for their first legal drink. Imagine getting all excited for the big day only to be told that you can't come in because of your hairstyle. Uh, Perth teenager Cooper Allen was out with his mom on the night he legally became an adult in Australia, and he wanted the celebrations to just to keep on going. Uh, so he headed to another pub with his mates, but was stopped at the door and was told that El Grotto in Scarborough was a mullet-free zone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking to Channel 7 News, Perth, who uh, just freshly turned 18, said, I had one drink with my mom and then a couple of friends, and I decided to head over on over to El Grotto. Uh, the bouncer said that... Uh, no mullets are allowed here. He was more concerned about his uh, flip-flops, but he wasn't too uh, fussed about that. Cooper said that the incident put a big damper on the night, adding, I reckon it's a bit silly. I mean, it's a mullet. Heaps of people have had mullets. To have one beer and get told, no, you can't come in because of your hair, was a little bit on the devastating side. I wasn't there to have a haircut. I was there to drink some nice cold frothies. Uh, in Western Australia, it's perfectly legal for venues to have a dress code, meaning Cooper's cries for help sadly will not uh, result in anything. Not even so much as a simple I'm sorry. Uh, so he had to move his party elsewhere because, well, it was a mullet-free zone. So the, the first bar let him in, though. Yeah. So he just has to go to a different bar. Yeah, big deal. What's he making a big deal about? Get a haircut. <laughs> Got your hair. Uh, have you ever had a neighbor uh, with a less than desirable, I don't know, yard decoration? <laughs> Uh, no, I have not. No? No. Well, uh, one Wilton man was arrested for displaying a wooden penis statue in his front yard. Uh, out of... <laughs> uh, Jamie Gagney has lived on Ruggles Road for the last 10 years. He recently found himself in a dispute with the town of Wilton over plans for his workshop, which the town says aren't up to code, so they have issued a stop work order. He just wants to live in peace and finish his workshop, according to Gagney. Uh, Gagney said that he's eager to do what's needed, but he says the town has been ignoring, ignoring his communication attempts. However, the wooden statue he placed in his front yard was hard to ignore. Uh, Gagney carved a wooden uh, seven-foot penis out of a pine tree <laughs> and placed it in his front yard. He says people passing by laugh, but the, he put up a sign encouraging them to go ahead and take selfies with the wooden penis. So he's a little surprised when state troopers showed up Thursday and saying they had gotten a complaint and they told him to take it down. Gagney complied with the state police and moved the statue into his backyard. He since uh, returned to the front lawn and placed it behind the sign with the words adult only spray painted in red. Uh, that was after he was arrested. The troopers handcuffed him and charged him with a public display of offensive sexual material. Uh, this is trying to protect the issue of potential exploitation. See, this is why we don't go live very often. <laughs> In a sexual manner, particularly as it relates to protecting children, according to Saratoga County District Attorney Karen Hagan. Gagney doesn't think the statute applies. It's just a giant piece of wood. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, tall. <laughs> it's a wood. It's, he's got some wood there. So basically, this guy's uh, he's in a pissing contest, a seven-foot-tall pissing contest with uh, the county he's, he lives in. He's going to lose. Yeah, probably. He's not going to win this. That's not the way to go about it. It's... But that's funny. That is funny. Actually, we have a friend that his son, uh, we won't mention any names, but his son did that in the snow. They made a huge penis in their front yard. It's a nice subdivision. Well, it it froze <laughs> solid <laughs> as ice. And when the neighbors complained about it, our friend couldn't take it down. <laughs> it, was, it was too hard. <laughs> See what he's doing there? 
So uh, yeah, they had to kind of wait till it melted a little bit before he could <coughs> he could go down and get it down. <laughs> I think you usually have to have some type of shot for that if it stays up for too long. I'm not sure. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to mention Cliff. We're going to load up a video here for you folks to see out there where a uh, police officer is a little agitated with uh, somebody in the roadway moving a little bit too slow. Normally cops get a bad rap because we pull you over for speeding, right? Well, we, right. we've got a guy who's driving. I'm not even so much. Let's just load it up here. Right. He's literally going one mile per hour. I'm joking can't hear the audio from zone. this end, unfortunately, but this I is mean, an officer who... Uh, Guy's he's easily a hundred. He's trying, he's trying to, to move on with his day. You shouldn't be out on the roadways and, to begin uh, with. He's not having a whole lot of luck here. I tried to talk to him, and he snapped at me. I don't know what this guy's deal is. <laughs> Come on, Grandpa. I got places to be. Trying to block and uh, obstructing traffic there. Everybody wants to drive slow with a cop a car behind him. Can't get nowhere on time. That is a big-ass turtle, man. It is, and you know, it, it's sure. moving pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny about, uh, we get turtles in our yard now, and I always, I never really mess with a turtle. I, you see turtles, I, but I wanted to get it out of where it was because it looked like it was in some danger. Mm -hmm. So I went to pick it up, and you think, well, they can't get you when you pick it up by the shell like that. Mm -hmm. Their heads come out a long way, <laughs> they came over and tried to get my finger. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and I just was, let it uh... be. So you, you just go ahead and live there. When I worked down in the uh, smaller community south of where we are here, uh, before I came to, the, to our town here now, uh, I was riding with a, was training one of our newer officers, a friend of mine, and we hit this this big th thud, or he hit this big th thud. I was sitting in the passenger seat, and I'm like, "What the hell was that?" Like it all, it lifted the front end of the car up off the ground, and so we got out to investigate what that was, hoping it wasn't like a small child or something. You know? <laughs> it was dark outside. I was just gonna say, that. and. Um, <laughs> It was, it was a big ass turtle like that one. Oh wow! And he, I, I, uh, I couldn't tell you the first thing about turtles really, but um, he had hit it so hard. I mean, we literally we, we ran it over, but it was huge, had a massive shell just like that one you saw there. But there was a lot of flesh under that shell, which yeah. I, I learned I had no idea. And it, it was injured. You could see the actually bloody flesh coming through that shell. Oh. And we were going to try and move it down to. Uh, we were crossing a bridge over like a little river or pond whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it down there creek i guess creek if you're from indiana um <laughs> and um that thing was mean man it hissed and it, it snapped at him so we got one of those rods i don't know if you ever see the way we unlock cars we have these long metal rods yeah, and yeah. So we got that and just kind of pushed it gym, pushed it <laughs> pushed it along and it was trying to bite that rod it was a mean son of a bitch man. wow i mean they're that but, big yeah so those things get mean um Move, uh, staying with the uh, the police police side of things. Uh, oops, we got the wooden statue back up there again. Sorry about that. Uh, we got another uh, officers that were uh, called of a suspicious individual in Australia while they're trying to serve a warrant. Got into a bit of a pursuit here, Joe. <laughs> it's a god alpaca. God love him. <laughs> Just staring at <him> that. <laughs> What are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do? Oh, he's actually gonna block us. He's gonna blood right up to us. <laughs> I've had some weird animal calls over the last couple of years. Um, I had a, let's see, I've had the, uh, the peacock running loose in somebody's yard here in, in the city, which was very bizarre. I uh, had the deer that was stuck down there in the, uh, the Wabash River on a little island down there. Aww. Had the horse that was loose on the golf horses that were loose on the golf course in the city limits. Um, what else have I had? What do you do? What kind of training do you get for this stuff? See, that's pro uh, we're not going to go down a negative path. Everything okay. was handled just fine. Just so you okay. Know. <laughs> we said we're going to keep things positive, and that's what we're going to do. So, um, what do we got next here? Going to move over to the Britain, the British. You're getting ragged here on the internet. I'm just saying. I'm getting ragged. Well, it, it's your, mostly your wife and yeah. Mindy Steele. Yeah. Yeah. My wife's friend. It's uh, they're killing you here. Well, they're not very nice people. <laughs> <laughs> um, two, <laughs> two third. They're, they're funny. They're they have their own show right now. I, yeah. They're not even looking at us. Anyway, moving on from the trifling. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Two-thirds of Brits wish their neighbors would be fine for having loud sex. 
Two-thirds of Brits wish their neighbors could be uh, fined for having sex too loudly, according to a recent survey. I wonder where people come up with these survey ideas. Like, very bizarre. We've had some really weird surveys uh, stories over the last year or so. The surveys so. are weird because yeah. they, they'll they say we surveyed 1,000 people, but that there might only be 10 people that answered the survey. Right. But they surveyed 1,000. So the surveys are... Well, never mind. Well, uh, a thousand people were pulled by an energy comparison site, Save on Energy, and two out of three respondents said they wished that their neighbors could be fined for an overly uh, raucous romp in the sack. Or not in the sack, I guess, depending on what your uh, flavor of the week is. Of course, you can make a noise complaint against your neighbors, whether they said the noise is uh, nookie-based or otherwise. I suppose it's the notion of a specific sex penalty, which two-thirds of us are in favor of, with the third who are opposed, presumably the ones responsible for the X-rated racket. Whether this issue is more or less pervasive at the moment is a mute point. On one hand, we're all spending a lot more time at home because of COVID, so you might expect us to be disturbed by the neighbor's rump, uh, rumpy pumpy more regularly. Rumpy, rumpy pumpy. pumpy. <laughs> hmm. I like that. I do too. I'm going to start using that. Hey, you want to have some rumpy pumpy? <laughs> rumpy pumpy. I'm going to just write that down. That's, that's a keeper. <laughs> I'm going to use this on every show. Um... Anyway, uh, many people's sex lives have drifted off, drift off, off into the abyss due to the lockdown measures, and that just doesn't apply to couples that live separately. When quarantine rules were first introduced, one of the only conceivable, conceivable benefits was the potential uh, for an imp- improved sex life for couples that cooped up together. According to the poll over there in Britain, though, however, uh, more than 10,000 people, of over more than 10,000 people, 69% of couples are having less sex than usual. That's because they're cooped up together and each other's damn nerves. I yeah, they hate each other. I, I don't know why, but British people, to me, it seems like it would be so tame. I do say, I do believe I have had an orgasm. <laughs> tut tut, cheerio. <laughs> yeah. Make me a sandwich. So, um, you're a cat person. You got, you got cats. I have, that, I have cats. They have glorious... Uh, uh, Here we go. Water, water fountains <laughs> that they, they drink out of and... <laughs> <laughs> Laser light shows yeah. that are going on. It's quite impressive. They have a better life than I do. <laughs> um, I'm not a cat person myself. My wife and I are both allergic to to the cats, and uh, we're not big fans. And uh, actually, when I was a kid, my my I don't know if I should say hatred. Yeah, I'll say it. I hate cats. So my hatred for cats came when I was a kid. Um, uh, the lady that babysat me when I was small had this cat that uh, at, at nap time, the cat just runs free throughout the house, and. Um, it would come up there and it would bite me and claw me when I, at nap time and stuff. I hate oh, it. Oh, wow. That kind of just set the... My cats are nice. Set me straight for cats from them from then on out. Then as I got older, I became allergic to them, so... Just not a fan of myself. I think but. it's a psychological thing, but continue. No, it's not psychological when it bites and claws at you. <laughs> no, I mean the allergy part. No, it's not psychological when my eyes start to swell. I was on we, a call. We used to do it. We used to do the show in, in my basement. <laughs> yeah. The longer we were down, the cats at first stayed away. Because they were scared to leave, but as they got more comfortable with him coming over, all of a sudden the cat would jump up on his lap <laughs> or something, <laughs> and you can see Lee's eyes getting all red. <laughs> and then I would continue the show as long as I possibly could. <laughs> it's been it's been two or three years ago, not probably now. We went on a some guys and I that I work with went on a domestic uh, call, and this house was crawling with cats. It had several adult cats, and then they just had a litter. Is that what they call them, a litter of cats? Yeah. And so these cats, these damn cats are everywhere. And it's it's hot. It's summertime. There's no air conditioning in this place. Of course not. And my eyes are starting to swell shut. I'm sneezing. I'm hacking away. And one of the guys I'm working with, well, what the hell is wrong with you? I watched cats, and they're everywhere. <laughs> Literally. They're, like, crawling off the walls. It was something out of a horror movie, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> going across the ceiling. That, like, that creepy He's like, Lee, thing. get the hell out of here. We'll just we'll handle this ourselves. <laughs> so I go outside. I'm, like, trying to overdose on Benadryl and Allegra and whatever else I had. So it was horrible. Do you keep that stuff with you? Uh, I, try, I do. And if I don't, I'll have to run to, you know, like a pharmacy here in town and, and grab something. But it's... It doesn't always bother me. That's the thing. Like, even, even at your house when we were doing it there in the basement. As long as the cats didn't jump on your lap. Yeah, I mean, I was okay be being in the basement, but it's when they get right up on top of me is when I'm in trouble. But so. you said Sarah's really allergic, though, isn't she? She's gotten really bad over, um, really, probably I'd say over the last five years or so. She's, to, to cats and dogs, she just, you know, we have a little, if you want to call it a dog, it's about as big as this computer probably, but uh, that's a hypoallergenic dog, and even if she touches uh, our dog too much, she'll start breaking out and stuff. So huh. It's really weird. 
Well, you know, as we get older, our allergies. <laughs> yeah, it sense definitely sense. changes. But anyway, we've probably gotten off track here. Uh, a woman pours water over her neighbor's son uh, after he did the same thing to her cat. A uh, woman has gone sure. viral on Twitter after revealing that she poured water over her neighbor's son after he did the same thing to her cat. When a woman by the name of Shannon Cooper revealed that she threw a ba- basin of water over her young neighbor after he poured a cup of water over her pet cat, she netted a Twitter bait about who was in the right. Excuse me. She wrote, my 10-year-old neighbor just threw a cup of water over my cat who was sitting on the fence minding its own business and, he, and laughed. So I threw a basin of water over him from the front window, and now his dad is at my door going mental on me, but I don't see the problem. Don't touch my cat. <laughs> uh, needless to say, this sparked an intense debate on the, the Twitter and about whether or not Shannon was right to pour water on the child, who she later revealed was actually 13 years old. He just looks 10. People are so mad over this, the kid and his dad were laughing about it today. We are friends. Also, I might uh, add that the dad never knew what his son had done, which is why he was mad to begin with. Also, the kid is 13 years old. Um... She added that after the water was thrown over the cat, the child's father was angry at her for throwing water on his son, suggesting that the boy is going to receive no retribution for harming an innocent pet. Uh, Like so many things on the internet, Shannon's actions had a divisive response. This is what some supporters had to say. One Twitter uh, Twitter user wrote, Bah ha 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 ha, it's water. The dad needs to chill. He should teach his kid to be nice to animals. I would have answered the door to a bucket of water in his face. Uh, They they added cruelty to animals as an early sign of serial... Uh, a sil- serial killer as well. <laughs> they let this go unchecked. Their son's new home will be in a cage. Uh, wow. So this goes on and on. Some really mean stuff, obviously, because of the keyboard warrior generation yeah. out there. But uh, it's, it's amazing how some people, with key, uh, they're, they're not as aggressive when you see them in person. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that too. <laughs> um, man, we just, the, the stories keep coming. I, I bookmarked so many stories this week. I don't know if I'd have saved some for next week or we should move on, but I, I got some good stuff here. Well, let's, let's go ahead and move on here. We got a, how about pigs, Joe? You a big fan of pigs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and uh, check this out where a uh, large pig escaped its uh, home. Look at the size of that mamma jamma there. Wow. That's a lot of good breakfast right there. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll slow down to your slow-mo here in a second. Wow. I think it's huge. That is huge. That'd be good for one of those 4-H competitions, I think. Yeah. I saw that guy walking. I, I think I'd have got the hell out of there. <laughs> wow. Good piggy. Big dude, man. Big dude. Hey, have you ever seen a guy that's armed and unarmed at the same time? That's what? Armed and unarmed at the same time. Um, I guess if he was holding a weapon in his teeth. Well, now you have. Ah. How's that work? Not really sure what he's planning on doing with that. Maybe he's got a seven-foot wooden statue in his pants. That he holds <laughs> <it over. laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's a little confusing. Seriously, how did he how, get that in his waistband? I was just going to say, how did he get in there? <laughs> That's the only explanation. He's, I, he's got a statue like that guy. I, in a... I think it was planted. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't my pants. <laughs> <sighs> We got Florida stuff today? We do. We're going to move in there here in just a second. Uh, you ever tried uh, the White Claw that turned a new hard seltzer that the, the younger generation seems to be into? No. I've tried it. It tastes absolutely god awful if you ask me, but uh, that's just me. Actually, it's just not me. I've seen a lot of videos where people can't stand it. It seems to be uh, kind of the 30 and under crowd and seem to really enjoy the White Claws. What, what does it taste like? Ass, I get. I guess. I don't know. It's I've horrible. never tried ass. So have you ever tried? I haven't either. But, um, have you ever tried like just a seltzer water? You yeah. Know what that tastes like so, mm-hmm. kind of like soda without the, the syrup, right? So. Right. It it basically that's what it is to me, and they 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 say they add these flavors like pineapple or, orange or lemon or whatever, but there's just. I, I a, think I might like it. It's it's bad, man. It, uh, anyway, White Claw was. Uh, Outlaw has been collared by officers. Turns out there are there are there their their motto is there are no claws when you're drinking claws. Okay. If I had my did it, yeah, uh, turns out there are laws when you're throwing claws. An attempt uh, to an avoid an arrest, a uh, Nebraska man. Who lost my place? An attempt to avoid arrest, a Nebraska suspect tossed a can of the popular hard seltzer at cops who sought to collar him for pulling out a knife on a hotel employee. Uh, according to the arrest records, thought I had his bookend photo. I guess I don't. Uh, according to the police, Matthew Stinson, age 36, was threatened Sunday afternoon to kill multiple times while in the lobby of the Luxury Inn in Lincoln. 
Stinson, who was holding a knife, allegedly threatened to murder a clerk at the hotel where he'd been staying. Stinson also made comments about hurting others as he departed the hotel. By the time Lincoln PD arrived, Stinson had fled the area. When Stinson was located about six hours later, he became agitated and threw a can of White Claw at the police and took off running. The spiked sparkling water, see that's what it is, however missed his targets and Stinson was apprehended after a short foot pursuit. Stinson was carrying a pocket knife and placed into custody. He was charged with the resisting arrest, use of a deadly weapon to commit a felony, and making terroristic threats. Stinson is being held at the Lancaster County Jail in lieu of a $20,000 bond. Wow. So how does that work? A $20,000 bond is how much cash? Well, it depends on the state. Like here, it would be uh, 10%. Okay. I don't know. And then if, if he does not appear for trial... Then he owes the twenty thousand, or the uh, they would likely the issue a bench warrant for his arrest, and he would likely not get bonded out until he sees a judge if they if they issue a bench warrant like that. So. Uh, last regular news story before we move into Florida insanity this week is this one's out of Berlin. A man in Vienna has been fined uh, five hundred sixty five smackaroos for breaking wind loudly in front of the police. A move <laughs> that's illegal. <laughs> a move that the Austrian capital's police force was at pains to defend on Tuesday. Uh, the local newspaper reported that the fine stemmed from an incident back on June 5th and that the offender, uh, the offender was fined for offending public decency. City police wrote on their Twitter account that, of course, no one is reported for accidentally letting one go. They added that the man had behaved provocatively and uncooperatively during an encounter with officers that uh, led to the incident. He got up from a park bench, looked at the cops, and let go a massive intestinal wind, apparently with full intent, according to the police report. <laughs> and our colleagues don't like to be farted at so much. Police noted that the, the, uh, their decision to arrest him could be appealed. Yeah, I, I don't think that's gonna. <laughs> don't think that's gonna make it. Woo! But that is that's nasty. I I hate when. I hate when people do that. It's disgusting. <sighs> Time for Florida. Oh, good! I love Florida. <laughs> In Florida. Da, 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 da. 58-year-old Florida man arrested after purchasing eating soiled underwear. After what? Eating soiled underwear. <laughs> Wait. Eating soiled underwear. No, I understand what you said. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm trying to figure out if that's a law. <laughs> <sighs> out of Lakeland, Florida, a Florida man was arrested on allegations of possessing and distributing child pornography. is also accused of ingesting underwear. Investigators, investigators learned that Jose Ar- Areza, Araza? We'll just call him Jose. Jose. Age, oge, age, oge, age 58, purchased and ate soiled underwear, according to Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd. Uh, Jose was buying these things and ingesting them. Did you hear me, Judd said. He was munching on them. This guy's got a problem. Uh, Judd revealed that the allegations during a press conference for Operations of Guardians of Innocence V, which led to the arrest of 16 other men, now facing a total of more than 1,400 felony charges. There's actually a market out there for this, according to the sheriff. You know what kind of things you get get you into soiled underwear, right? Sometimes you think you're passing gas and you're not. You just can't trust a fart when you're over 60. But this guy, he'll buy it. Uh, Judd said that Jose has been fired as an IT specialist for Lockheed Martin. Jose holds a master's degree from Florida International University. Uh, people who look at it and lust after child and porn are dangerous people, and they may be living right next door to you. Uh, also arrested in Polk County child pornography operation were a pair of former Disney employees and a local nurse and a local pharmacist. I wonder if they're going to get buried as bad enough. We're not going off on a nope, tangent. Nope, 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 nope. Eating soiled underwear. <laughs> yeah. That's just really <laughs> weird. Yeah. That's just odd. <laughs> Naked Florida man on LSD accused of hitting a cop in the downtown Melbourne area. Out of Melbourne, Florida, a Melbourne man was arrested Friday after police said he was wandering downtown naked and violently attacked two people, including a police officer. New Six Partner, uh, New Six Partner Florida Today reports, uh, Brian Adam, uh, age 41, let's put up his uh, nice book and photo there for you, uh, was charged with exposure of sexual organs and battery of a law enforcement officer. He has since been released from the Brevard County Jail on bond. Officers responded to New Haven Avenue near off the tracks after receiving reports of a naked man in the area. Well, that's not a behavior Florida. <laughs> why did they even respond? Uh, I don't know why they were called. They arrived at the scene to find uh, this guy with his cuts on his naked body and a possible head injury. When police attempted to take him into custody, he struck one of the officers in the face. 
Police then restrained him and brought him to a local hospital where he was reportedly said he had taken LSD earlier in the day. According to arrest reports, another man came to the police department and said uh, this subject had slapped him when walking by him <laughs> earlier in the day on the road. He was additionally charged with battery and resisting arrest with violence. <laughs> no, what? Well, because he hit the policeman. Yeah. But if they resist, I guess like running away maybe is without violence. We need to look that up. <laughs> I do need to find that statute. We've always been fascinated by what they consider with and without. Yeah. At least, if, I guess, if you hit the cops, then that's considered violence. Although there's been times where we've seen where, how is it not with violence? I don't know. Yeah, because they were, they were fighting them. I you, guess if there wasn't a hit, you I big, don't You big Godfather fan, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> uh, classic movies, uh, The Godfather. Well, it was a trilogy, right? I right. A trilogy of movies. Uh, Florida Man claims to be Michael, Cor- Michael Corleone from The Godfather movies. Uh, meanwhile in Florida, Al Pacino, I'll put his picture up there if you're not familiar with his handiwork, uh, played the character Michael Corleone in the famous Godfather movies. Uh, however, James Ramson of Florida tried to convince local police that his name was, in fact, Michael, Cor- Michael Corleone when they were called to investigate a disturbance at a local boardwalk. The police were called about a man yelling at people. When they arrived, they found Ransom with a case of Natty Light and a bottle of Captain Morgan. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> uh, when the police questioned Ransom, he kept saying his name was Michael Corleone. Police uh, fingerprinted Ransom and alleged that he used a fake name. Ransom has been jailed on several charges, including including using a fake name with authorities. Florida's just special. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. <clears throat> have to uh, forgive our dial-up internet here. It's taking a minute. Future Sora's man in Florida sets anus aflame. Please read that again. Future Sora's man in Florida sets anus aflame. Ah. <laughs> uh, stock Future Sora over the weekend when a man in Florida set his anus aflame. The market was looking dire heading into the weekend as cases of COVID-19 continued to rise, uh, according, to Buster, uh, according to Buster Cherry, a market reporter on CNBC. Then Flor- a Florida man sets his anus aflame. On Saturday afternoon, a Florida man in Dade County set his anus aflame. How many times do I have to say this? <laughs> anus aflame. <laughs> that's an odd way of saying it. But <laughs> uh, Lit his ass on fire. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, do we have sa- pictures of this? <laughs> uh, we have pictures of a guy. Uh, he looks pretty happy. <laughs> That's the guy right on, there? On Saturday afternoon, a Florida man in Dade County set his anus aflame when he was trying to impress a girl. The inflamed anus was a blessing in disguise, according to Liz Byan, an economist at Goldman Sachs. Uh, all market historians know of an inflamed anus as a catalyst for stocks. Those who are not on the market historians that there have been several times in history where a man sets his anus aflame and stocks uh, then proceed to soar. More specifically, in Chapter 11 of The Intelligent Investor, Ben Graham tells investors to go in on all stocks when the anus is on fire. This man likely doesn't know it yet, but he's a stock market hero. Uh, his face will be all over the Wall Street Journal come Monday. Anyone, uh, anyone with long stocks is going to kill it. Florida man is being held in the local county Cape Day jail for uh, hiding 60 pounds of meth up his anus. Uh, wow. Emergency room doctors found the methamphetamine when performing surgery on his burnt butthole. Now, this is a uh, what you call satire. He didn't actually have 60 pounds of meth up his butthole. I was going to say that's a lot. But uh, I, I couldn't help but, but tell the story just because the photo that they put with this was hilarious. Because it looks like he's got something up his anus. <laughs> And he looks like he likes it. <laughs> ah, Florida. Such Florida. an easy target. <laughs> Ever use a machete when you're in the military? No. No? You know what a machete is. Yeah. It can be considered quite a, a violent weapon uh, mm-hmm. of choice. A uh, man with a machete tattoo on his face is charged with a machete attack. Florida man with a tattoo of what appears to be a machete underneath his left eye. Uh, has been arrested and charged with following alleged machete attack. Justin Couch, age 25, is accused of using the weapon to slice his victim's forearm as he attempted to defend himself, according to the Hernando County Sheriff's Office. The victim, who hasn't been named, claims that the incident began last Saturday evening on the 13th of June. When he returned home to take a shower, noticed there were several people having a small gathering. Couch was said to be among those in the house in Spring Hill, Florida. The victim says that Couch struck up an argument with him for no reason as soon as he got inside the property. The victim asked Couch to step outside in a bid to discuss what was going on away from the others. According to a police report, as soon as the two males walked outside of the residence, Couch pr- produced a machete and approached the victim in a, an aggressive manner. Where did, where did he pull this machete out of <laughs> that, that nobody saw it before? Maybe he's he... got seven-foot trousers. <laughs> uh, before the victim said anything, Couch apparently told him that he needed to leave. The victim uh, agreed and, uh, to leave and said he just wanted to go inside to retrieve his wallet and cell phone. 
couch then told the victim no and said, there's nothing for you here, leave. The victim insisted on getting his belongings from inside the resident. At this point, Couch is alleged to have begun striking the victim in the arm and a leg with what he believed was a flat side of a machete blade. Couch then swung the machete at the victim's face in order to block the strike. The victim quickly placed his left arm in front of his face. The victim, uh, his left forearm was struck with the blade of the machete. The victim then felt severe pain and passed out. No shit. Uh, an unknown friend ended up taking the victim to the Bayfront Health Spring uh, Hospital where he just re- received treatment. The victim is unable to move or, uh, move or use his left hand due to the severity of the injuries sustained. Mm. Three days after the alleged incident, officers attended, a, an adre- <clears throat> excuse me, a- attended an address at Stillwater Avenue in Spring Hill, Florida, where Couch was located and placed under arrest. He's been charged with aggravated battery with a bond of 10000 bucks. Once again, where was this machete when they walked outside? That On his nobody... face. Didn't you see the tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's when he used. <clears throat> well, at least it wasn't like, you know, a Pop-Tart or anything like that. I like the Pop-Tart We haven't had stories. a good food battery in a we while. We have not. Kind of letting us down there, Florida. <laughs> Man arrested after girlfriend falls off the hood of his pickup truck. Woman was trying to prevent her boyfriend from leaving home after an argument, according to the deputy's report. Out of Key Largo, Florida, a Key Largo man was arrested Thursday night after a domestic dispute led to his girlfriend falling from the hood of his moving GMC pickup truck. Sounds like a good country song. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and she uh, fell off my pickup. Carlos Alejandro Luna, age 37, faces charges of reckless driving and DUI, causing serious, serious bodily injury. According to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office spokesman, Adam Lenhart, who was the witness who called 911, he called 911 after seeing a 29-year-old victim falling from the hood of the pickup truck and Lua, uh, Luna fleeing the scene. Lionheart said the couple had gotten into an argument ahead of the incident at their home in the 800 block of Benito Lane before the woman got on top of the hood of the truck in an attempt, <clears throat> an attempt to get her boyfriend from leaving. Lionheart said Luna drove with his girlfriend on the hood of his truck until the 900 block of Lobster Lane. <laughs> no, not great. Now I want seafood. <clears throat> <clears throat> then she fell off, landing on the ground uh, unconscious but breathing. Witnesses told deputies that Luna initially got out of the truck after his girlfriend fell, but then he got back inside and drove away. Lionheart said he returned to the scene when deputies arrived. Uh, deputies arrived. The woman was treated by Monroe County Fire Rescue Paramedics before being taken to the hospital. She was later airlifted to uh, Jackson, where she is listed in serious but stable condi- uh, condition with injuries to her head. Uh, she uh, she should have been wearing a helmet when she decided to there jump on top of that truck. injuries to her head before she got on that truck, <laughs> I don't understand why he's in trouble. What was he supposed to do? He was trying to leave. Uh, Lightheart said that Luna confessed to drinking alcohol before the incident and told deputies that he had medical marijuana card and THC cartridges in his par- <coughs> excuse me his pocket. Authorities said he failed field sobriety exercises at the scene and his blood was drawn for further analysis. He's trying to go. <laughs> and I don't understand that. Well, that's all we got for Florida. Normally, we like again, we would segue into political garbage. Last week, we decided to stay away from yeah, politics yeah, for the future because there's just too much depressing news out there right now. So, right. Uh, we kind of scoured a little bit for uh, some good news to end the show with for the foreseeable future. Maybe we'll just stick with that for good. I don't know. We'll see how it goes over yeah. <clears throat> with our dozens of followers. So, uh, dozens. <laughs> that's kind of an exaggeration. <laughs> Uh, we got three feel good stories this week, Joe. Oh, good. Uh, we're gonna start with a uh, good, uh, good news story where a librarian uses a drone to deliver books to kids. A drone. <clears throat> a drone. You know those things. Oh, a drone. Them. Yeah, drone. Oh, okay. I think you said. Going <clears throat> a little hoarse because uh, apparently after talking about the cats, my my throat's starting to swell <laughs> a little bit. So. Uh, when schools and libraries across the country closed due to COVID nineteen, kids were left with a few activities to keep them busy. So Kelly Pasek, a school librarian in Montgomery County, Virginia, came up with a great way to make sure kids in her community still have books. She delivers them with a drone. Drone. Uh, Students request books using an online form. Then Kelly fulfills the request, packs the books up in a special delivery boxes, then drops them off at a drone service her family uses. From there, the drone service handles the deliveries. Students have access to more than 150,000 titles. And thanks to Kelly's creativity and hard work, the students get the books they choose delivered right to their front yard. That's really cool. That is awesome. <clears throat> I think people don't read anymore. Yeah, they don't. I love reading books. Well, they like to read the drama on Facebook and Twitter. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, books, so. and it seems like, uh, you know, even because, you know, I write lots of stories on Facebook. And, <laughs> and I noticed that if I, I'll have a really good story. It'll be really long. It's a good story. Mm-hmm. And I have to... I have to really 
drop it down. I have to take out a lot of descriptive things yeah. <laughs> because I know that I will lose people halfway through the story. And a lot of times my last paragraph ties everything together. Right. And I, I feel like if I don't get rid of three or four paragraphs in there, I, so I can't even keep people's attention this yeah. much dialogue. <laughs> I, I can't imagine anyone reading uh, Tale of Two Cities anymore. It's not even with reading though, right? I mean, even with... Um... Our and I, and I'm guilty. I mean, I'm guilty of the same thing. I, I, I will find myself like reading your stories because you and I are friends, so I'll read your stories. But <laughs> sorry, uh, it may take me a couple of weeks to get through. But, <laughs> but no, but even with videos, you know, and we see that with some of the goofy stuff we do here, where people are like, well, I watch. You know, I've talked with people, a lot of people that watch the show. I watch a little bit then, you know, in the morning. I'll watch maybe some in the afternoon in my lunch break, and then I'll get to it later in the night or something. Because our show's usually anywhere between thirty minutes and an hour usually, mm-hmm. um, which we're about close to the forty minute mark today. Um, and your attention, our attention spans have gotten so short over time. And even those of us that, you know, grew up with books and some of us still like, enjoy reading today. I, we've had discussions probably even on the show that we're surprised that, surprised that libraries are even still around. Really, yeah. Because people's attention spans are so incredibly short. And, <clears throat> you know, they, they, there's statistics that show that if you read, that helps fight off, you know, some mental, de- you know, you know deficiencies as you get older, like all like Alzheimer's and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and doing crossword puzzles and things of like that. It's not just about watching videos and and TikToks and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter right. and stuff like that. So I it, love getting a nice big book. Now I like uh, fiction, mm-hmm. uh, but mom, my wife loves uh, biographies and stuff like that. Yeah, see, I always enjoyed autobiographies myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I did there for a long time. I was when I was younger. I was into the, like a lot of the Stephen King novels too, mm-hmm. um, which I would I still wouldn't mind reading. But those are, but I don't know. As I got older, for some reason, I really got into autobiographies of people. I, I've always liked history, so right. it's kind of been fascinating to me. But um, this is just kind of a cool take on it with, with her doing that. She's using modern day technology to bring back something that they, yeah. they still encourage kids to read because it, it it helps you learn. You know this uh, COVID thing too. I mean, not only is that good, but. Have, a lot of families are spending more time together. Yeah. And I and well, that's that's good and bad, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it is neat to see more family units. Yeah. Um, we've seen the the uh, I don't know what they're called, but like the pop up libraries uh, in different communities where they you know take a book, leave a book. They, yeah, they, yeah. They look like oversized birdhouses, kind of mm-hmm. with little doors. Um, so those are great ideas too. Obviously, I guess when COVID has spiked, maybe that's not the best thing to use. But it's really cool that she's you know utilizing her family's business to, to do that yeah, to get to her kids. So that is really neat. I know teachers have struggled in some cases in how to reach out to their kids. That's a very creative way to do it. So Justin Eikenberry just suggested donut drones. Justin, I think you're a genius. He is a genius. You know, <laughs> Justin's got all these great ideas. He's thinking up a new ways to scare the shit out of us come October again. Uh, he's... Yeah, because we're doing the. the we're not going to have the light in there next time, so I, you're going to hear me screaming like a little girl. I, I'm going to be off all well, If we don't have a light, we're going to be tripping all over the damn place because it's pitch black. Well, can't we have can like see. a black light? Can't we have something where we can that see? That light I used last year, I shouldn't have had it up all the way. You can actually dim the settings on Oh, the okay. Door, so. Well, that's what we need to do. because <laughs> That was my fault. It was, uh, it was creepy with the lights on. I can't imagine people going through that in the pitch black. <laughs> there are people groping you and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Well, now I want a pizza because Justin tuned in. <laughs> Justin makes a mean pizza. <laughs> hey, Justin, can you bring, can you send your drone over here with a pizza? There you go. You know, I like pineapple on mine. Save your hateful comments. It's good. It's good. Uh, moving on, Florida man surprised the struggling businesses with some checks. Uh, Florida man surprised uh, several businesses struggling due to the coronavirus pandemic with checks to help him stay afloat. Jeff Small, oh. the owner of Advanced Composite Structures, said the coronavirus did not impact him. So he wanted to pay it forward to others who were affected by the, the uh, coronavirus. Small chose five different businesses in Sanford and surprised them with checks to assist them with rent and being able to stock their inventory. I'm hearing these people are becoming so desperate that they're about to close their doors and not knowing how they're going to pay next month's rent. Maya Books and Music received a small check from Small. The owner said she was blown away by his generosity and says the money will help her business out a lot. I have more confidence to go on now that I don't have to worry about money in the bank, said, own, said the owner of Maya Books. Uh, it's just like having the sun come out on a really rainy day. Small is hoping his acts of kindness will inspire others to do the same. I don't want to be patted on the back, Small said. That's not what this is all about. What I want to do is challenge other companies that weren't affected by COVID to step up and to help take care of our, other, our own. Small has followed in the footsteps of others as far as donating checks, checks to help a business in need during the coronavirus. Uh, 
WDRB reported that an Indiana man surprised one of his favorite restaurants with his stimulus check to help keep them open back in April. In that same month, uh, Breitbart News reported that a customer left a $4,000 check as a tip at a Colorado uh, saloon. Wow. Wow, that's neat. So I've seen different instances of this where... um, I wish people that guy are, would come visit the bakery. <laughs> well, people are kind of paying it forward in, in unique ways, uh, businesses that maybe weren't affected by COVID and are not being affected by COVID so much are paying it forward. Uh, I've seen some videos where some guys have left some really massive tips for waitresses and waiters and <clears throat> different things of the sort. So people, you know, all across the country, you know, and we're not going to get off on a tangent here, but, you know, this is kind of why we're doing this. We see nothing but the negative in the headlines mm-hmm. every single day. But there's so many positive things But there's things so really many good things on. out there. People are doing so much good, but it's the things that the media doesn't want you to see. You may have to look for it, like I have been here, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it's there. There's... I see it every day. I see it. Um, drive throughs that I go to, I, I love certain foods for lunch. I don't know if I should mention things, but I don't know how many people pay it forward in these drive throughs and how many people are, uh, and I never really thought about all this stuff, but I, I tip all my, uh, the drive through workers now. Cause you think about it, they never get any tips. Yeah. And man, they're smart because they're listening. They're taking orders. They're trying to get people set up when they come in. It's just way too smart for me. I can't do any of that crap. <laughs> So I try to tip them well, and they're, it's amazing how you can say something nice to them. Yeah. When, when you get up there, boy, I, I see some of these lines are really long at lunch. Have you yeah, seen these? Yeah, they're crazy. And, and you see these guys working their butts off. They have these stupid masks on. Not that they're stupid, but yeah, I think. But they're, they're hot. They're yeah. really hard for them to work. And I can see you know, them perspiring and stuff up there. And they're trying to do three things at once all the time. Tell them what a great job they're doing. They appreciate it. Yeah, I, there was one young man. I, he got me all of my stuff, and, and he was very being very polite. And I said, "Hey, I really appreciate what you're doing. I know you're working hard, and thank you so much." And he and he smiled. He said, "That that just means a lot to me." That, that was very simple. It was free, and everyone can do that. But I I think it is happening. I I noticed that at Kroger's too. Uh, just going through Kroger's, how many more people stop and talk? Just to say hi, exchange pleasantries and stuff like that. It's really neat. You know, when I was, <clears throat> when I was growing up, we used to hear a lot about um, who's your hospitality. And I, I feel like that's almost, and it's not gone, I don't want to say it's gone to the wayside, but, but the way things are, just with the media shoving crap down your throat 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, people kind of forget about taking care of each other and being kind to each other. And it's hard almost not to get into a negative mindset sometimes if if you're watching too much news, if you're reading too much BS on social media. Right. It almost brings you down. And I've tried really hard to step away to an extent. It's hard for me to do. I know we've talked about it before because I run the social media for my department and I have to kind of keep an eye on, on things like that. And then obviously I get sucked in. You know, when I'm looking for news stories for our show here, I, I, I try and scroll past stuff, but sometimes something will catch my eye. Right. And you get sucked in. It's really hard to do, but... Um, you know, my our the community that we live in here and the community I work for, as a whole, has been extremely supportive of our police department. I don't know how many times a day, people come up to me and tell me how much they appreciate what I do for the community. Oh, and absolutely! It's awesome, and I I really appreciate it. I I, we, I do all the guys and, and gals I work with. They appreciate it. We appreciate the support, but don't forget, folks, to 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 do that to everybody. Like Joe's saying. Give it to your fast food workers and the guys that make uh, excellent donuts and yeah, especially those you know, guys. You know, everybody's out there trying trying to make ends meet and just, well, I, just I, build each other up. That's all you got to do for I, uh, to help with the media. Just build each other up. I so. just made a post this morning about uh, our delivery service that we that we do. You know, mm-hmm. we go home to home uh, certain areas, and I'll bet twenty five percent of all of our orders go to somebody different than what mm-hmm. than who paid for you it. Paid for it, yeah. And they're sending it to the police stations, emergency rooms, uh, retirement homes, their neighbors. There is one, and it was so cool. Um, we had him sent to a house, and the lady calls me, and she said, hey, we didn't order any, any donuts. I don't know. They said they were paid, but they're, they're not ours, and I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I said, well, what's your address? So I looked it up on the spreadsheet, and I said, oh, okay, well, this person called and paid for them and, and she said your address and said you were neighbors and she got 
she was really touched. They had been in some sort of squabble for for a while, and they had just recently made up, and she was it was just offering just offering a little just something nice to to yeah show her appreciation for her neighbor. <laughs> And she was very touched. It was so sweet. And she got a little choked up when she was thanking me for it. So I think you need to thank your neighbor. <laughs> but uh, I have seen so many nice things going on with all this. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> our community especially, and it's a smaller community, they've done a really good job, from what I'm seeing anyway, of, of supporting each other and building each other up and keeping things afloat so uh, we hope everybody keeps it up and keeps up the positivity as much as they can we know it's hard just try to keep trying to look for the positive uh positive things each day so uh, we're gonna end things joe with uh african rain frogs who look like angry avocados and they sound like squeaky toys no Uh, when i was a growing up i was a little bit obsessed with frogs i have no idea why i don't know either i actually had one in high school i had a uh like a, me and my best friends uh, had these rubber frogs hanging from our rear view mirrors. Remember the Budweiser commercial, the Budweiser frogs? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what kicked it off. Kicked, kicked it off, and it was kind of a trendy thing back then. So uh-huh. we actually had three fr- three frogs. Uh, one had one one was labeled Bud from a mirror. One was oh, no. labeled Wise, and then one the was Err. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, hey, Aunt Darlene. We, uh, given anything that's going on in the world, it only seems right that we want to see something downright adorable, right? Well, let's enter the uh, frowning frog, also known as the black rain frog. The species of frog is only found on the southern slopes of the Cape Fold Belt in South Africa. <laughs> it's kind of cute. It is kind of cute. We'll put up a few pictures there. Um, anyway, the species of frog is only found on the southern slopes of Cape Fold Belt in South Africa. He looks Africa. very sad, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, that's why they call it the frowning frog. Uh, the elevation is up to, of up to over 3,300 feet. Because the black rain frog is a burrowing species, its habitat is forest, and it doesn't even need the presence of open water. What a, quite the interesting looking creature there. I've never seen a frog that looks like that before. Uh, we're going to put up a few few different pictures here. You can see why it says it's a frowning frog, I guess. Um, still kind of adorable at the same time. Well, yeah. Um, but these things are they're only found in, in that area. Uh, it, the black rain frog is, is actually what it is. It's not really sad. It just has a bit of a uh, resting uh, sad face. <laughs> it's a resting bitch face. Yeah. <laughs> Known for more than its looks, when the scared frog uh, puffs itself up with the air to make its body more round, it kind of looks like a puffer, puffer fish. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just kind of... It's, it's, it's a cute little frog. I it is. Um, I, thought, I just thought that was kind of interesting. But it doesn't need water. So it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. It doesn't yeah. need water to survive, so... Um, can it can't can't even walk when it's puffed up. <laughs> it's That's how I feel in the morning. <laughs> Sorry, you'd have to eat all your donuts in the morning. Which are perfectly healthy and keto for all you health nuts out there. Yes, sugar free, fat free, sugar free, fat free, cholesterol free, carb free, keto friendly, gluten free. Yeah, they're just good for you. Uh, that's all we got. You got anything else you want to touch on before we blow out of here today? We've rambled on for 15 minutes now. Oh. We haven't gone that long in a while. I was kind of sad about that picture that I just saw there. <laughs> don't put that one up there. No, we don't. That's, keep, that's... keep the resting bitch face, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, I got nothing. I think I've, I've rambled enough, too. Well, I hope for those of you that have tuned in now and tuned in later and enjoyed the show today. I tried to put together as many uh, interesting stories as I could for the week. So, uh, sorry we didn't get it out this morning. Uh, some weeks we'll go live. Some weeks we'll have a pre-recorded show, just depending on the schedule. So, uh, thanks for everybody tuning in, and we'll catch you guys next week. Oh, go back, go back to our old shows and what. And yeah. we had a great donut fight um, yes. last week. It was it was really fun. We you know we should do that with. What what if the police and the fire department? Donut battle. Yeah. Sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> says the guy sitting on the sidelines and is still exhausted from a two and a half minute donut throwing contest a week ago <laughs> we, we, seriously it was two and a half minutes and I didn't realize until we're out of donuts and she she cut the film and all of a sudden we're <gasps> <gasps> and my arm felt like it was going to fall off and you can if you're watching the video my first throws I'm throwing them really hard and by the end I'm eh <laughs> eh <laughs> I <laughs> suck. Uh, needed some O2 after that one was over, that's for sure. So. <laughs> I need uh, to get yeah, shade. you can find that on our timeline on uh, 
Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, I believe, is on the YouTube page as well. So, okay. Uh, don't forget to check out doing50.com. You can find all the content on that website uh, there. It's all categorized and everything. So, I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in to our Insanity, and we'll catch you guys next week. Take care. See you later.